Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Yoster on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for July 13th, 2021 with a voice crack in there. Well, welcome. From what I can tell, um, nothing special is going on this week outside of obviously a continuation of the Solstice of Heroes that goes until August 3rd and uh, of course the season ends about a week after that. You know, it's 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 in the thing, you just look, 41 days, 42 days left, it's, you know, what is that, um, six weeks? Really six weeks? Wow, okay, it's a lot more weeks than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys have noticed that there's really not that much to do in Destiny 2. I honestly did not play that much, which is why I haven't gotten that much progress on the Solstice of Heroes stuff, but it is a lot faster than it has been in previous years, or so I'm told I have not reached the higher levels on all my characters. But I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, what the heck do we do? And honestly, don't burn yourself out. You might as well go play some other games and wait for some of the content that you like to see. This is the last DLC before a major expansion, the Witch Queen thing, so it's okay. This is what happens every year. Which is probably not what I should be saying considering that my, my livelihood depends on it, but you know, I, it's the honest truth and we'll figure it out. Anyways, if you're looking for the regular weekly reset, first up for the Nightfall, we have the Inverted Spire. The Inverted Spire is that original base game beta mission, which is also kind of short, so you're definitely going to need Legend. I don't think you can go lower than that, but obviously there are champions and a decent amount of them. But this is very quick and the, um, you know, the Grandmaster version is also fairly doable. The boss fight's not that crazy. The Vanguard Strike Burn this week is going to be Solar Singe. The Rotating Crucible playlist is going to be Clash. This is kind of like Team Deathmatch. Moving on to the Moon stuff. First up, the Empire Hunt is going to be the Warrior. This is a pretty easy one. For the simulation, it's going to be Agility. I believe this is going to be the inside-outside one with the cubes. Deepstone Crypt Raid, we have Of All Trades, third encounter of the raid. Basically, everybody has to do all three different jobs. There's a special chart you can look up for this that helps you make sure everyone does the right job. I also wanted to mention I will no longer be going over the moon stuff. Obviously, there are nightmare hunts that you can do, and then there's the Garden of Salvation stuff, but it has been two years, so I'm going to avoid doing this from now on. As for the Vault of Glass challenge, it's going to be Ensemble's Refrain. This is most likely going to be the final boss checkpoint, and obviously... I don't know how to do this. I, I'm imagining it's not just pushing Atheon off the edge, but that could be fun. <laughs> Moving on to the seasonal ch Again, I did play a lot last week. The seasonal challenges for week 10, we have only four new ones. All right, so I took a look at them. First one is going to be a bunch of melee grenade or super kills, very much Solstice Weary. This one is defeating combatants in override while wearing the Season of Splicer armor and bonuses with moats. This one is going to be explosive weapon kills anywhere, rocket launchers and grenade launchers. And finally, gambit matches with certain subclasses, which is only six gambit matches, but it's it's seven too many in my opinion. Up next, let's take a look at Banshee's inventory. So I went ahead and looked at all of the different gunsmith options. First up, the sniper. Not a lot of great stuff here, although a lot of range, if that's something you really like. Lonesome, great roll on this particular weapon. Ricochet, rapid hit, kill clip, great roll, although I don't like this particular type, the precision frames. Seven Seraph EY7, not the best. I personally still am not a big fan of the precision frames, but if you like Sayur's Wrath, this is a pretty good PvE roll. And it also works with Warmind Cells. The Last Perdition has an okay roll, but there are a lot better ones to go on. Outrageous Fortune is a 150, inherently worse, and of course, it is a terrible roll. And then finally, Memory, memory Interdict, probably the best roll it can have, auto-loading spike, but I prefer having something like Full Court that Interference 6 can have. Up next, let's take a look at Eververse's inventory, showing off the different items for Bright Dust and perusing through the Silver section. First up, we have the Power Rising, which is literally just a Dragon Ball Z power-up scene, which I do like. I've had it for quite some time. We have the Predator Sun Shell, which came out with, um, I think this was like the first Solstice of Heroes, so this one's been around for quite some time. We have a Sparrow that's very solstice if you would like that. And then finally, we have the Oiled Algae, which uh, is also Solstice, but I just don't know when I'd want to use it. Moving on to the other Bright Dust section. First one we're going to have is Breathe In, which is literally just doing this. You get some light around you, you breathe in, you stand back up. It's pretty straightforward. You have the Shaded Shell, which is pretty fun and interesting. I would recommend this one if you don't have a lot of good ones. We have the Legacy one, which is a boat, but the, um, the exhaust is blue. So that's cool, I guess. Uh, we have the other one, the On Guilt Wings, which is uh, obviously glows whenever you hit the boost button. This is one of the more unique sparrows, and I would recommend it. We also have the Sweltering Heat, which is exactly what you'd think it is. We have the ornament for the Merciless. We have the Ghost Projections. We have Transmit Effects. Everything is all pretty straightforward. Uh, beyond that, we have the Grand Luster, which is very close to, you know, the original Leviathan Shader. We have the Golden Age Wine. 
which is very purple and yellow. Again, don't know when I'd want to use that. The pomegranate gloss, which is de ve very different from the, the from the preview, and it has this little texture on it, which is something I really do like, and I would personally recommend it. And then finally, the tangerine gloss, which doesn't really really work on anything. I don't know. I don't know about these colors, but uh, yeah, that's Eververse. And finally, Hawthorne, for the weekly raid challenge on the Last Wish raid, we have Keep Out. Now, I, I, I believe this is fourth encounter. This is going to be the one with the, uh, the, the the vault and the knights. This should be the one where you just don't let them into the center circle area. Although I thought that was the one from last week. I probably am going mad at this point. And that is going to be pretty much the end of it. Of course, make sure you come check out my live streams, twitch.tv slash Link in the description down below. Oftentimes doing open lobbies, solstice grinds, override, all the seasonal stuff. Come check it out. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Manny Boudou, Mom and Dad, Dr. Strange, Joe Smith, my nasty Bachmas, Raymond Shoney, your Pentacle Sherman, Casey Reagan for their support on Patreon. And that's it. My name is Onecronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.